Art is cool because it saves my life again and again and again. <laughs> My name is Mihaela Lani and I'm a DJ and an artist and I play with kids for a living. <laughs> I grew up in a lot of small towns in Texas. I was born in Grapevine, I've lived in Lufkin, Abilene, McAllen, San Antonio, but Austin's the place I've lived the longest. I've lived there for more than half of my life. Let's see. So I basically come from rednecks. A lot of my life was in the country, um, so playing in the woods and things like that. I was also kind of a tomboy, so I'd build ramps and jump bikes. Um, I also collected stuff. I was always kind of a random collector of random pieces of glass and just things I would find as a kid. I was, I was shy. I was really shy. Um, I was really friendly once you got to know me and I loved animals, but definitely shy. And I actually, I think that's why art and music has been something I've gotten into because moving a lot and being shy, art and music helps, so yeah. I have an older sister and an older brother and a younger brother. My older sister was a huge influence on me. She was an artist. She was actually the artist in the family and it took me a while to actually call myself an artist. Um, but, but at the same time, she was a huge, huge influence on me. Um, kind of helped me understand my place in the world at an early age. Part of it was because um, my parents had a lot of prejudice and she would hang, hang around with a bunch of really fabulous gay guys in San Antonio. And I saw at an, un at an early age kind of how full of shit that prejudice was. And it helped me navigate as I grew up and had to deal with my own, you know, my parents maybe not liking some of my friends because of the way they looked or something like that. It helped me get a little piece of wisdom at an early age to help navigate that. <sighs> homemade. <laughs> I am a homemade artist. Um, I grew up, uh, we grew up not having much and so I believe in making a lot out of a little. Um, I think growing up not always getting what you want helps you be creative. And so I learned at an early age to be really creative with the limited resources that I had. And that's a huge influence on my DJing and my collage work. I think I've all, always practiced art. Um, I, ever since I was probably, my first memories, I was always drawing um, and making things. But I don't think I ever gave myself the name an artist till I was out of college. Um, my first collage I made when I was in kindergarten. I actually thought I made my first collage in fourth grade because that's when I remember learning what collage meant and I loved it. I loved the whole idea of putting different things together. Um, I think I kind of accidentally started making collages. It's therapeutic for me. Um, magazines and scissors are really cheap and readily available. And um, I think I just started getting into randomly cutting things out and, and just enjoying the shape, if that makes sense. And because I can't cut a straight line for my life, but I can do the curve line of life like nobody's business. So. Um, yeah, and I, I don't know, I feel like sometimes things just come to me. It feels like I'm pulling tarot cards. It just, it feels like things, a lot of times I'll make something, I won't have a vision ahead of time, and it feels like there's a message I'm supposed to read. So a lot of times I'll make something and then I understand what it means the following couple of days. 
In 2014, I started a project where I made a collage a day and I posted it to a Tumblr page called I Rock Paper Scissors. Um, I was just really curious to see if I could do it every day and what that would be like. And I did it every day for about seven months and then I took a break. <laughs> and um, I still um, make them, but then I got kind of tired of um, posting them every day <laughs> and I needed it to go back to something for myself. So um, I've just recently started doing them at least once a week again, uh, but I think it's been an interesting relationship. I love the idea of the alchemy of juxtaposition. I love how two different things can come together and open up a world. So I think with DJing and collage, I explore both of those. It's exciting to me um, when I bring things from different worlds together and see what happens at that crossroads. Um, that motivates me a lot. I mean, I think definitely I'm interested in, in empowerment. I always need a dose of empowerment, so I'm attracted to images like that. I think also, too, I see, we see a lot of advertisements. We're inundated with ads all the time. So for me, I kind of like to take the elements I like and throw away the commercial stuff. So it's kind of rearranging things. Um, and I think out of that comes messages. So I, I yeah, definitely, um, I explore empowerment, um, I explore emotions, I, and also um, just in humanity. I think for me, um, you'll see lots of different colors and kinds of people in my collages. And so I think I, in some ways I imagine um, as if I'm a visitor from another planet. Like I see, uh, I see people as a human family, and so I like to try and express that in my collages because I think there's so many things in our world that split up our family, and so I think I really enjoy seeing how, um, how alike we are and celebrate how beautifully different we are all at the same time. Probably one of my favorite ones I did um, was when I had a back injury. Um, I actually had a back injury probably about 10 years ago and I had back surgery and I um, it was really frustrating for me because I couldn't move my body like I was used to and it, and it messed with me a lot and so when it would flare up um, it really infiltrated a lot a lot of my life about how um, sad I was that I couldn't use my body so one of my favorite collages I think was a way for me to envision my health and um, so I, I just gathered lots of things that um, helped me feel better. I, there's also one I did um, that came to me really fast, and I and I love the way it turned out. It was a um, it, the picture was actually only two pieces that I put together, and um, one part is a little girl praying, and there's wind blowing on her hair, and basically what I did was I cut her dress away, so you just see her arms and her neck and I put her in the sky um, at the top of an explosion. So it looks like her explosion is the dress. Um, and that's one of my favorites. It was so simple, it came really fast, and every time I see it, I physically feel, I feel it. And I, I love that feeling of when um, you're connecting to a higher power, and I feel like it captures that energy. Right after, Sandra Bland was murdered. Um, it was in the news a lot, and it was really, you know, obviously devastating, heartbreaking, frustrating. Um, words can't even capture. <laughs> um, and it's frustrating. It was fr at the same time, um, I think that lion got killed by some dentist. And that juxtaposition of Black Lives Matter and how there were lots of white people mad about this lion but offended by Black Lives Matter. That hurts my heart and touches my heart. And um, I was feeling a lot of that stuff. And I don't always know how to process it. And um, when I made collages that week, a lot of really strong, kick-ass black women showed up in my collages and lions showed up in my collages. And um, it kind of helped me capture some power and understand some power and even not dichotomize the lion and Sandra Bland, but um, because I felt like there was a dichotomy there. And so it kind of um, helped me synthesize all of that that was going on and make some sort of sense in my own small world. 
So I always collected music. Um, I always had a little, you know, my thing of cassettes and my little boom box. And I always had that with me. And that became a part of my identity probably from when I was 10 or 11 years old. Um, younger, I liked music. Like I loved Jimi Hendrix when I was younger because he was left-handed like me. But it really had to do with that. <laughs> it wasn't until I got older that I appreciated his music. Um, but I was very obsessed about music. There were times I couldn't sleep and I would um, sing every chorus of every Duran Duran song when I was 11 until I went to sleep. <laughs> so I had definitely always had um, an interest, almost an obsessiveness with music. And it helped me um, navigate being shy. It helped me make friends. Um, it helped me when I was shy about having friends, all of that. Um, when I was in high school, I had a boyfriend who I helped get his DJ equipment. I helped him with ideas. I would, um, you know, all kinds of things. But I was kind of in this mindset of, I can't do that. It, I'm, I'm embarrassed to say it, but I was one of those girls that thought that was something boys do. Um, that was a long time ago. When I went to college, I ended up doing social work um, kind of stuff, um, teaching, working with children. I was a children's advocate at a women's shelter. I didn't consider myself an artist. Um, then I had um, a back injury and I, and I got kind of burnt out from helping people so much. And I decided to get myself turntables on, and I got them on my 30th birthday. And on my 30th birthday, that was the same day that Nina Simone passed away. And it and um, she showed up on several of my first mixes. I taught myself how to beat match, and I started picking up random gigs at coffee shops for a sandwich. I DJed at a on a pirate radio station here in town, and I think it's just been really fun for me to explore all different kinds of music. I love records. I feel like there's spirits and grooves that want me to play them. I get like weird feelings where I feel like I need to hit this thrift store and sure enough I'll go to that thrift store and there'll be a brand new Fred Wesley record there. Um, or you know a box set of Johnny Cash with 50 Johnny Cash songs. And I just, it may sound silly but there's times where I feel like there's ghost DJs <laughs> that, that want me to have their records. And so I show up and take them <laughs> and I play them for the people. Um, and it's fun because I get to play 90s hip hop, um, 80s boogies, 70s funk, 60s soul, um, old country music I grew up on from the 60s and 70s and 80s. Um, I like all kinds of music, Afro pop, Latin stuff, um, some genres I know more about than others. I love like, you know, 80s new wave kind of music like Kate Bush. I love glam stuff like David Bowie, um, you know, Smith's The Cure, but then I also love Queen Latifah, Missy Elliott, um, you know, um, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Public Enemy, all of those. Um, when I was in college in the 90s, I started Open Mic Hip Hop Night at UT. And at the time, there weren't really many places for people to go and um, enjoy hip hop music in town. Well, let me back that up. There were lots of places in East Austin, and I think that it was still pretty segregated as it is pretty much in a lot of ways. When I was in college, I wasn't aware of a lot of those places. And, and so um, I started an open mic hip hop night where we would bring DJs uh, to come play music and it would be in a spot for um, MCs to practice their freestyle skills um, and all of that. And in fact, in 1996, we were able to bring the Roots to play and that was a big deal So um, at the time. So I've always been into music in different ways. Um, so now I'm grateful that I get to people, you know, pay me to support my record habit. <laughs>